Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today I'm doing another installment of Shop My Stash and I am using products that have sat in my collection that I have not used before on my face to get this absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, flawless face. You can tell I'm excited. I had no duds and these were all new products. So if you want to see what I use to get this face, you're going to have to keep watching. But before we do, y'all know the drill. If you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So please hit that subscribe button. If you love nails, hair, makeup, all things related to beauty, a little bit of fitness sprinkled in, you're going to get it on this channel. I won't keep you waiting because I know y'all are probably curious about what I used. If you want to see what I used to get this look, then stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, so this is episode number 1,564. I'm joking. This is probably episode number four, <laughs> number five, I don't know, of Shop My Stash, trying out new stuff, new to me in my collection. And I have this bin right here that is all stuff that I recently purchased and have not used yet. So the first, we're gonna talk about these. I ordered these brushes from Rose and Bin Beauty. I ordered their complexion trio. I'm not gonna lie, I got sucked in by Instagram. The account always shows the most beautiful looks, the most incredible hacks, and talks about these brushes all the time and just how they're so perfect and how they don't like the foundation brush, doesn't pick up a lot of product. It doesn't collect a lot of product on the brush. It stays on your face. And then the blush brush actually is good for creams or powder, and you can go back and forth between them at the same time, which I thought was pretty incredible. And then the trio came with a contour brush, and I was just like, sure, why not? So I don't even know if these are real hair, synthetic hair, what is going on. This is the foundation brush right here. So it is pretty densely packed. It's at an angle like this and I'm pretty excited about it because when she showed doing her makeup, like she put on cream foundation, pop liquid, whatever, and then showed the brush and there was barely anything on it. So I was like, okay, you covered stand on your face. This is the contour brush. So you can see it is at an angle and it's chiseled, so fits perfectly in the hollows. And then this is the blush brush, which honestly, I like the shape of this, but I also feel like it reminds me of my Morphe brush that's kind of shaped like this too, which I love for foundation. Like I feel like this could be used for foundation too but it's supposed to be for blush. So I'm gonna do what it says. So I'm gonna start off with my face primer. Like I said, I try to keep stuff in the box so I know for sure I haven't used it. This is the Iconic London Underglow Blurring Primer. Have not used this. This got really hyped up for a while. Ooh, she separated. She been sitting for a minute. I think I bought this, not the last Sephora sale, but the one before that. But yeah, this got pretty hyped up for a while. Gorgeous packaging, absolutely love it. And I don't hear anybody talk about it anymore. So I don't know if it was like, oh, people were talking about how good it was because it just came out and then it was kind of a fad or what was going on. I don't know how much of this I'm supposed to use. And of course I just spilled that in my lap. So let's see, in my hair. It does have a scent to it, so if that is something that bothers you, just be aware. Kind of smells baby powderish, but it feels moisturizing. Like I like how this feels going on. It does feel smoothing and also pretty blurring. So that is what that is looking like right there. I do feel like I have a little glow and I do feel like it's a little blurring, so that's promising. Now, another reason why I said this video is gonna be long, y'all know I was gonna pick this up. Y'all know I love my grungy greens and my camo, my olive, like that is my thing. And so when I saw this palette, it was not a question of if I was gonna get it. 
It was, am I going to pay full price for it because I want it that bad? Luckily, I did not. I had a coupon for 15% off, and then I bought this during the Memorial? No. Was this around Memorial Day? I think it had to be. Anyway, I think so, because she was having a sale, and I bought something else. Y'all going to see in a haul video. And then I got a gift card for $10 to go back and buy something else. And then I was like, oh, use it on this palette. So I paid $48 for this palette. Super excited about that. But this is the Yucca palette. Yeah, it was all the stuff I've heard. It's not Yucca. It's Yucca. And this is one of her mini midi palettes, which I absolutely love them. This is what it looks like right here. Y'all, this is like... This is everything to me. I saw on Instagram, somebody popped these out and rearranged them. And the way they rearranged them was basically like from lightest to darkest and all the shimmers at the bottom. And when I saw it like that, I was like, I don't know if I would have bought it like that. Because when you put this shade and this shade next to each other, and then like some of these shades are super similar for this palette to be as small as it is, I was like, I need some more variety. Like, why does that look so similar? I don't know. So I do want to swatch these. And I'm just going to do arm swatches real quick so you guys can see. Start up here. So this is the first shade, Plantasia. Very sparkly. Is this a duochrome? Okay. Then this is Kalili. Calathea. I probably should have wiped my fingers off since I have that primer on there. Then we have whatever this one that starts with a K. Another super shimmery foily shade. Then Acacia. This is the one that is flaking everywhere. I also realized that when I was looking for videos of this, I'm going to put this at the top. This is Camu Camu. When I was looking for videos of this, I did not see swatches on dark skin, which is another reason why I wanted to do this video, even though I know this palette has been seen by everybody at this point. Because I was like, how are these going to show up on darker complexions? And I know I'm not even that dark, but just if it don't show on me, then anybody darker than me, like, does it even pay to get it unless you're just going to use it for like highlighting shades? So we're going to go into the next row. I'm gonna do these on the other side. This is Tipu. So we'll do this one up here. So like you can barely see that. And I feel like, is it too dark to use as a lid shade? Then we have Elysian. Gorgeous shade right there. Topi Silver. Then we have Valley which again, another shade you can't really see that almost blends in. So that can't even be like a transition for me. But this is one of those shades that ends up looking darker. Like if you look at the residual on my finger, it looks darker around the edges. So I feel like this is one of those shades when you go to work it in, it's gonna look darker as you blend it out. Um, then we have Citrine. So that's this one here. So that's what I'm saying, like, this is what I was worried about, that these shades were just not going to be, weren't going to show up a lot. So were you just getting this palette for the shimmers? So that's that one there. So those are the first 10 shades, but I mean, look how similar those look. So let's get into these last ones, and I'm going to do these on the inside of my arms. So these are, looks like probably the, mm, I guess not the darkest, but we have Flax, which I'm pretty sure is the darkest shade. So we'll do that one here. Then we have Fushi, which is a cream to powder. Beautiful orange. Then we have Makia. Another gorgeous green. Then we have Ixia. This should be a good transition shade if you're doing a warm look with this one. But I feel like you can't even see that. <laughs> and then Willow. So 
So at least that shade shows. So let's see if I can get close enough to make sure y'all can see. So these are the last five shades here. Then this is your middle row. And then this is your top row. I'm gonna start off with priming my eyes and I'm using my Colored Rain paint base in the shade Rope. This is super light, so I do have to be careful. I haven't used this in a long time. Everything else in here I think is new. I haven't bought a new eyeshadow primer. Like I know I don't need that and it's not something, see I barely used any of this. It's not something I buy often because I feel like 90% of the time I'm using concealer anyway. So unless it's like I need to add something to make it hit a certain total or whatever, I'm not really checking for these. I'm gonna go ahead and set this with a little powder. The powder I'm using is the Derma Blend powder in the shade Cool Beige. I got this from Ulta during their 21 Days of Beauty sale. God knows how long ago that was. This is not open yet. I have used the translucent one and I really like that one. But I wanted to try a shade. I sometimes feel like when my concealer is light and I use a translucent that is a very finely milled, it almost kind of gives me like a gray cast. So I wanted something that had a little color to it, but still going to be translucent for me. So I'm just going to, I'm going to use this for my under eyes too, so you can see better how it works. But I really like this powder and I love that Ulta has had it for sale multiple times. So I'm probably gonna do two different eye looks. I'm not going anywhere today, so we have room to play. I'm gonna do two different eye looks just to try to see what we can accomplish with this palette, and then you do the rest of my face. So if you're here for the palette, I'm gonna do that first. I know that's what I'm here for. We're gonna go in with Valley, this shade right here, and just put that in the crease. Ooh, that is very soft. Has it been that long since I used Natasha Denona? Do her always do that? I don't feel like I remember this. I'm gonna have to pull out a Natasha Denona palette and see if this has always been the case. Another thing too, when I was trying to decide if I was getting this palette, I knew I was getting it, but you know what I mean, um, was if I needed it because I was like, okay, what palettes do you have in your collection that already remind you of this palette that you already like that you don't need to buy it? And I thought about my Juvia's Place Tribe palette kind of gives me these vibes. And then I thought about, I made a list because I've started packing and I was supposed to pull these and then I packed them. I also have the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. See, this is what I was talking about. You see how that looks darker in there when I'm building it up? That's what I thought was gonna happen. So color is showing up well for a good transition shade. But I feel like it can also be built up because you see it's getting cool toned in there. That's what I thought was gonna happen based on what I saw from the swatch. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so Metropolis, this kind of made me think about Metropolis, but Metropolis has more blues in it. And I also haven't used that one in forever. So if you liked Metropolis, maybe this one could be good. It's not as expensive. Um, it does also kind of remind me of Ace Beauté Tropical Vibes palette. And then what were the other ones? Safari Rain, Gemini Melt. And then I also got the new Nomad palette from um, the Safari one. That's my first palette from them. And so I was like, how fitting that it is the same color story that I love. Next shade we're going to go in with, I'm going to take, let's try Willow which is the kind of bluish greenish shade. See, I don't feel, yeah, this one's pretty powdery too. Oh, okay. I thought that was gonna just like, I didn't think that was gonna come off that strong. But that is a good thing. I feel like this is looking pretty true to color to what you're seeing in the pan, so happy about that. All right, so blending that into the other shade a little bit, I think that color payoff is showing up really well. So glad that that is staying true to the shade that it is. I am going to take the cream to powder shade. That one's Calathea and see, 
I always am, I'm never sure like what brush I need to use can I put that on top of there because right now I don't think that did anything Mm, does it it's either too close in shade or you can't put it on top of a mat already I thought it would help deepen it but I don't think oh uh, maybe a little bit I don't really feel like that did much so maybe those shades are too similar to put next to each other so that's something else to think about as far as our next shade, are we gonna keep this our matte eye? I think Makia would go best, this shade right here. So we're gonna put that one on the lid. That is pretty. Oh my goodness, yes. See, this is my problem. If a palette has a green in it, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna buy it. If it has more than one green and some shifty shades, take my money. Like, what are we even talking about? That is so pretty and I did not even wet my brush. Like what else in here goes with that though? Like that's just, I feel like I always kind of do the same looks, but I'm not sure what direction to take this because the other shade that I thought could go you can't build up. I can take Flax, which is the darkest shade. And that one is a regular. No, that's just making it look gray. Okay, we're not doing that either. Well, I guess that's all we're doing for this eye because we can put a little bit of Comorobia. And I feel like I definitely need to, let's try with a brush first. I'm going to put a little bit of that on the inner corner just to see. She is very sparkly though, so I am going to wet my brush to try to not get a lot of fallout. Ooh, that definitely amped that up. Yeah, you can definitely see a difference. <laughs> that almost mutes the other one I used a while. I'm gonna take Ixia, this tannish shade here, and just blend around the edges to see how that looks. Just cause I wanna try to use as many shades as I can. I think it's pretty. I guess I just, I feel like I wanted something else a little more. All right, we're gonna move on to the other eye. Interesting, okay, so let's take Acacia, this shade up here, and see how that's gonna come off. Okay, now that shows up better and different than I thought it would. That is coming off very olive green. I feel like it actually looks better on my eye than it does in the pan. Let's go a matte eye. And then I'm probably gonna take this off and do a final look. Yeah, let's do a matte eye. So we're gonna do Camu Camu on the lid and see if we can build this up to look like something. Cause I just remember, okay. I remember using the neon shade in the Trio Chrome palette and I was like negative. All right, that's showing up. <laughs> that is definitely showing up. You definitely need to pack this on if you want to get maximum color payoff, but. I definitely feel like this is worth it. If you love pastel neon shades, this is so pretty. I'm going to blend these with Citrine. No, Citrine is what I just put on. Uh, let's go with Tipu, this shade here. I think I've only swatched that one. Use the other side of my brush. Yeah, it's all the matte shades are just like really kicking up. Okay, I think those look good together. 
and I think they blend well together. So if you're interested in a matte green look, you can definitely get that with this one. All right, let's try this flax. No, let's go in with Calathea and see if we can get her to build up this cream to powder. And I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try a few different brushes to see if that makes a difference because tools also matter. I'm gonna try a pencil brush kind of. Yeah, that's better, there we go. It's almost, yeah, there we go. Makes me wanna just like go in with my finger. <laughs> but now it's showing. I just had to get a brush that was denser. I mean, but it does look like this shade over here. So I did not expect Willow to look like this. And then go back around the edges with Acacia. So that is our matte eye. And I know normally when you do more than one look, you put on lashes and do all that stuff. Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> it takes too much work to get all that stuff off. I really just wanted to show you guys the colors and a couple color combinations. And then I'm going to take this off, do another look, and then do all that final stuff. But I just wanted you to see how these apply. So these are the first two looks. I think that matte came out really, really pretty. I don't know, what do y'all think so far? Comment, let me know, do you think this is feeling like it's worth it? Do you think, mm, I love greens, but I'm gonna pass on that one? Let me know, I'm gonna take this off and then we'll go into the final look. Since I did not use Citrine and I have not used Ixia, I feel like I'm gonna try to use both. But I'm gonna start with Citrine here and I'm gonna put that in my crease. I'm going to yeah, I figured this would show similar to the shade we did on our lid, which that's what it's giving. Almost yellow. I see the citrine. Um, I'm going to do a halo eye with this look because I want to put Plantasia in the middle. And I just feel like that will pop so well. So we're going to do that. But y'all comment and let me know, is this... I really am going to have to go back and play with my palettes because I do not remember these palettes being this powdery. Maybe it's just been a while since I used it. A Natasha Denona palette, it I mean. That's actually showing up lighter than I thought and it's looking more yellow. Not a bad thing, but I feel like maybe it's giving the palette a little more variety than I thought with some of the shades, cause those darker shades almost look identical. So I don't know about that. All right, so now I'm gonna take a smaller brush and I'm gonna go in with Ixia and see how that looks with that. Okay. I like the gradient that that's giving. Now I'm going to take the same brush and I'm going to take flax and start building our halo around the edges, the outer and inner corner. I don't know. I guess I just thought this palette had the potential to be really grungy and I don't feel like I'm getting that as much as I thought I would have. All right, I just went ahead and did the other eye off camera because this was taking a little while and I, didn't <laughs> I ain't trying to have this video be an hour long. So now we are gonna go in with Plantasia, this gorgeous, I don't know if you can see that it is a multi-chrome shade up here doing all that little shiftiness is doing, but we're gonna put that right in the center and then see what we need to build up around it. Definitely spraying my brush for this one because she is very flaky. But very, very pretty. I feel like I need to use my finger. Mm. 
There we go. Oh my goodness. I think I just found the shade that might have made this whole palette worth it. Like, look at the dimension that gives my eye. Insane. I feel like trying to even put another... Ooh, let's put the gray. Yes, let's do that. I was like, I feel like trying to put another shimmery shade in this is not going to look good, but I think it'll go. So let's put Elysian around the edges. I'm going to spray for this too. Let's see what we get with that. Uh... Yeah, I can see it. I was about to say, that is not doing anything. This is about to take over. There is not going to be a halo. Yeah, I don't really think that did, that did too much. A little bit, but that middle shade just took over. I'm going to go back with flax just a little bit to make sure I don't lose too much of my halo because... <laughs> These shimmers are taking over. We're going to stop right there for the eyes. I'm going to get into the rest of the face because I am going to do that on camera as well. And then we're going to finish everything together. For foundation, I am using the Very Valentino, Valentino Beauty. What is this? Light Lasting Perfecting Foundation. I got mine in the shade DN2 and... Oh, she might be all right. I bought this... <sighs> last summer <laughs> y'all it's been a minute and I've gotten a tan since then but I think this is gonna be okay I remember at the time yeah she'll be fine um I remember at the time when I bought it I was like oh this is my perfect shade and then I think I got a tan like right after that and then I was like well it was good while it lasted and I never even had a chance to wear it so we're gonna see what this foundation brush does Oh, okay, so I can, uh, yeah, I can already see this is not hardly picking up. Any of my foundation. Like it's just staying on the bristles on the outer bristles so that I can keep spreading it as opposed to like sinking into the brush. Oh, this looks so pretty. This foundation is gorgeous, like already. I don't know how it's going to wear, but first impressions. And I think I used about two pumps. That is so pretty. Wow. I don't know if it's because the brush didn't pick up a lot or what, but I don't think I need any more. So we're going to stop there with that and... Next thing we have is our concealer. This is also new. This is the Givenchy Prism Libre Skin Care and Concealer. I got this in the shade N385. This is a little light, a little tiny bit, not bad. Oh, I did not wet my sponge. We'll be all right, I got my brush. So we're just gonna go ahead and go in with that. I have not, oh no, she's not too light. I have really gotten away from like super light concealers. I know y'all see how have seen how I used to do my makeup and it was always like super, super bright. But then I feel like, I think watching Rose and Ben do one of her little informative shorts on Instagram, it showed like if you do, if you have dark circles and you put super light concealer, it's just gonna make it even more obvious that you have dark circles because it's going to look gray so you need to go in with something that's not too light and I was like you know that makes a lot of sense because I would have to keep building up and building up my concealer so I feel like this is a really good shade and it's not too light y'all I do not want to get addicted to those brushes because they are a little expensive but she has like a like I said I got the complexion set which was the face brushes, but then she also had another set that had a concealer brush and a, 
I don't know what the other one was. It was smaller and flecked. And I was like, I don't really need those. But now I'm like, mm. and she has a puff and a bunch of other stuff. Now I feel like I need something lighter, but my powder's light, so we'll be okay. Coverage is good. I think this is like a medium buildable. What does the box say? Corrects dark circles, redness, and imperfections for an even luminous complexion. Yeah, I don't know. But I do like the shade of this because I do feel like it helped cancel out my under eye circles. So this is definitely getting an A plus from me. And you can see there is some luminosity to it, but you know we don't play that around the under eyes. I have to set because stuff creases on me. So even though my sponge is not wet, I'm just going to take this and go over it to press that in and then take the other side and use it to press my powder in after I do my initial set. Oh yeah, that is perfect together. It gives a tiny, tiny bit, not coverage, but I don't know, like it sets everything and it brightens a little bit. I think the shade is perfect. For bronzer, I have my cream bronzer in the shade. This is the LYS Beauty No Limits Cream Bronzer Stick. This is dark. I got it in the shade Strength, and I feel like it is gonna be super dark, but we're gonna see if we use a light hand, <laughs> if we can make this work. Cause I remember swatching it, like barely swatching it. Yeah, I have not used this yet, obviously, because there is no kind of nothing on the bottom i'm i'm kind of nervous let me start on my forehead yeah see that is super dark i don't know how i'm gonna put this on my cheeks Ooh, that is dark yeah i don't think i'm gonna be able to put this on my cheeks not like that I'm going to definitely have to like put it on the back of my hand and try to warm it up and I love the shade of it, but yeah, we got to be a little more precise. So I'm just going to take some on my brush and see, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that and I'll come back over here. That is still so dark. I thought the shade above it would be too light for me. So I never even thought that one would be in up my alley to even try because I was like, there's no way that's going to fit me. But I love the shade of this though. Oh, it is so pretty. Clearly that is my thing when I really like something. I was editing one of my videos the other day and I was like, that is so pretty. That is so pretty. That is so pretty. And I was like, Barbara, you have a very big vocabulary. <laughs> you would not be able to tell from watching your videos. All right. So we're going to stop there. I got my little patchy part. Never fails. Do y'all have that like parts of your face that you apply your makeup and it just looks patchy no matter what you do? I don't think I ever would have noticed that if I wouldn't have started doing YouTube and like really paying attention to how I apply makeup. But yeah, every single time. But I love this. I have this Estee Lauder Double Wear Powder. This is their Stay in, matte, stay in Place Matte Powder in the shade C1 Cool. This is... Is this gonna... I'm gonna take a powder brush. I feel like, let me see. No, I feel like that's gonna lighten this up too much and I don't want that. So we're not gonna use that. I thought I was gonna use this to set it, but I'm not. No, never mind. We're just gonna leave it. I don't care. <laughs> but I need to use this powder because I love Estee Lauder Double Wear in general. And so I found the powder at a CCS and was like, yep, we need to go ahead and try that. We haven't tried that yet. I think the shade might be a little too dark. I always struggle buying powder foundations because they don't look dark enough in the pan and when you swatch them, but then when you build them up to get coverage on your face, the color looks different. So what do we have for blush? Okay, I got a few options here. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but 
we're either going to do Gucci or Armani. But then I also have this Natasha Denona puff paint that I've never used. And I've had this for years. And I think this is only good for a couple, like six months or something, I think is what I remember. But like, what if you've never used it? So look at that. Oh, that is so, mm. love that shade. So we have Gucci, which is in Warm Berry. Oh, this packaging has a very beautiful shade and that would look so, so gorgeous with this look. And then we have Mania. I think Mania was lighter, almost like a coral. Yeah, we're not using this one today. So how are we doing this? Am I gonna just put Natasha on my face? Dot, dot, let's start with that. That looks so deep. Let's try to make sure she don't go all over the place. Oh, that's pretty. And it has a little bit of a sheen to it. I don't think I was expecting that sheen. That is really, y'all saw that was just two dots, right? I don't know why I thought these did not have that much pigment. And this is something else. I feel like they came out and maybe people who got PR packages talked about it, but then nobody talked about it. Oh yes. Y'all know I love my blush and this is right up my alley. Oh, the other brush. Ah, oh, crap. Oh man, okay, we're gonna put this back. I had a contour brush and everything. Oh God, okay, we're gonna have to use those in the next one. All right, so we're gonna take the Rose and Ben brush for blush and I am going to tap. Ooh, a lot of pigment on that quick little tap. I know I should not put that directly on my face. Oh, that's not that bad. I mean, we're going to be full of blush regardless, but y'all know. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a lot of blush, but that is a beautiful shade, too. Those almost look, they look similar. So, makes sense that they look good together. All right, and then for highlighter... I have this iconic London Kissed by the Sun. So cheeky, multi-use cheek glow. Our cheeks are already glowing, but let's see. I do remember this is more of kind of like a bronzy shade. So we're going to see how this is going to apply with these cheeks and if it's going to apply with a highlighter brush. Yes, yes, that is picking up. Yeah, see that almost just looks like a blush topper. Oh. If y'all are into like that cold girl look, whatever's happening right now, where everybody's putting blush under their eyes and across their nose and all that stuff, I'm not that girl. But if you are into that and you want something glowy, this is absolutely stunning. Ooh, all the products on the cheeks. We got one more highlighter just because. This is the Bobbi Brown Afternoon Glow Highlighter. I also picked this one up because I knew I was going to want something that had a little more pop to it. And baby, she's popping. So we're going to take a little bit of that. We're just going to have super glowy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just a little bit, because this needs to go. I don't want that other color on my nose. That is not my thing. But this, yeah, she can get it. Okay, for bottom lash line, I'm going to go in with Calathea, just because I want something different. But I knew that was still going to give a little bit of grunge and keep it dark. And we're just going to do this super, super messy and smoky. And then is there any, we didn't use Ray. So let's use Ray on the bottom middle part just to connect with how we have 
in the very middle. I can't do this. <laughs> I need two hands. There we go. Yep, that's what I wanted. I think the eyes are good. I'm gonna do, do I have a new brow product? I don't have a brow product, so I'm gonna do that off camera. I have a liner. It's a gold. Let's just see how this looks. This is not high end. This is from Rimmel. Is it still good? It is. Ooh, and that's pretty. I think that would go with this. I hope y'all can see that. Yeah, a little bit. Let's just see how it looks. Yep, I like that. I don't have any other ones lighter than this. I had a blue. Oh, that's pretty. That's not going with this look though. I pulled it just in case I would have finished with Willow. That's what I was thinking about, but no. Okay, so I'm gonna do my brows and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show y'all lashes and a new liner that I have and lips and we will be done. Okay, before I do my eyeliner, I wanna do mascara because I have a new mascara. It is a tubing mascara. This is from Ulta, not really high end, but whatever. I wanted to try this because I just had to see. Y'all know how I am about tubing mascaras. That's my favorite to wear. This is that plastic wand that normally comes with tubing mascaras. Whoa. Okay. That definitely left some color payoff right from the beginning, which I love. Actually, this is kind of good. Y'all know I'm always on the hunt for the best tubing and between Thrive has always been number one for a long time. And then Milani came out with theirs and that, those are pretty much interchangeable for me. But this one, I'm not even sure if y'all can see it. I feel like that's one of the hardest things to show in a video. This is doing really, really well. And not all tubing mascaras are the same because I tried the one from Blink Beauty and that one was, I believe I remember I was like, nope, not it, not gonna happen. I'm wondering though, I feel like, I don't know if this is giving me as much volume as the other ones do, but I feel like it's making my lashes really black and it's making them long, just not volume. I tried to build it up a little bit and I feel like she started, oh, that's still very wet. Okay. I thought that would have dried by now, but it has not. This is a very, very wet formula and I feel like it's taken a while to dry. So be aware of that when you're using it, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to the lashes. I'm gonna only do one and I'm only doing this because this is a Lily Lash Magnetic Pair. These are huge and they're probably gonna, <laughs> they're probably gonna cover up my eye look. Holy crap. But these are magnetic. So I bought her Click Magnetic Felt Tip Eyeliner to go with the Click Magnetic Miami Lashes. And it says it is a two-in-one top do eyeliner and a magnetic lash bond, easy to apply, smudge free and waterproof. Does it tell you how to use it on the box? How to use, shake well, sweep the pin along the lash line, allow for the liner to set completely dry, which is 10 seconds. And then once it's dry, apply it to the liner and maximum hold is two to three. So do the liner two or three times. So we're probably gonna do two just because I have all of this eyeshadow on y'all. I tell you once the face is done, it makes the shadow. And now I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad I got this palette. And that makes me think those other looks probably would have came, looked a lot better too. I mean, they looked good, but you know, they would have had more of a wow factor. So. Let's see. I'm gonna do two layers of this. And I like that you have to just let it dry. I don't wanna waste this trying to do a wing. I'll do a wing if I decide to after with another liner. And then see how we can get these on because these That's some big old lashes. <laughs> Y'all know that is big for me. Wow. All right, so let's get these on. I feel like I don't know which one is right and left. These also look like I probably need to cut them, but I love that these have a lot of magnets because 
I can't tell which is supposed to be right or left. They look exactly the same. Yeah, I need to cut this. So I'm gonna cut it right at one of the magnets. This is such a big lash. Yeah, we're gonna do two magnets off. Okay, felt it grab, but it's grabbing to my lashes. Definitely has some grab to it. Like I felt that latch on. Ooh, why does it feel like it's tightening? That is weird. Like it felt like it grabbed onto my eye and like got tight. I don't know, but it's on there. Like that feels so tight. Wow, okay. Okay, this might be one of the best magnetic pair of lashes I've ever tried. Those are on, those are huge and I had no issues. Like it feels like it is stuck for sure, no questions to my lid. Wow, okay. I did not expect that to work that well. Is it stuck? Yeah, it's stuck. All right, let's move on to lips. I've never had lashes on this big, so if I'm blinking funny, you know why. All right, for my lips, lip liner, I have, I don't think I've used this on camera. I have my Jaclyn Cosmetics bold brew lip liner that's the name of it bold brew i like this shade it is a brown which i knew i needed for this look these are very creamy i hate that it's a sharpener though y'all know how i am about that but i love this shade like this is a shade that i would repurchase for sure lip we have the rouge dior forever liquid Transfer Proof Matte Liquid Lipstick Ultra Pigmented Weightless Long Wear. This is in shade 200, which I'm praying is a nude because that's what we need and this is what I want to use. Yeah, she's a little red, but we can make it work. I think it goes well with these cheeks anyway. I love how this ombre looked how this came together. I think this goes with my cheeks too, so I'm not even mad at it. I probably would have went with a nude because of the eyes, but I think that is it. Do we have a setting spray? I don't think I have anything new. So I'm gonna use my Charlotte. I hate the sprayer on this. It's so much. This is not technically a gloss, but we're gonna use it like one. This is also new. Pat McGrath Lip Fetish Divinal Lip Shine in Nude Venus. Yeah, she is very, very pretty. And she will add some shine to this. So we're just gonna put her. Yeah, there we go. And this is it for the final look. Y'all excuse my hair. It's doing whatever it wants to do today. And I'm this is not a hair video. So comment, let me know what you think about the products I use. Out of my favorites, I would have to say I had a lot of good. This Natasha Denona Paint Puff, I did not think it was going to be that pigmented. First time using it, have had it over a year. So however long it says, what does it say on here? It says 12 months. They last longer than that. I can tell you that right now because I've had it longer than that. This Gucci blush, y'all, I need no more blush, but this absolutely gorgeous. This iconic London blush highlighter situation. Y'all saw what it did to my cheeks, love. Bobbi Brown highlighters are always good. This bronzer. I think I'm gonna get a lighter shade just because I don't wanna have to be so careful when I use it, but love. Y'all, this combination right here, I feel like my face looks absolutely amazing. And the shade works. Shade Twins out there. DN2. Is that what I got? Yes. DN2. Absolutely love this. I don't know if it was the brush or what, but I feel, or the primer. I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I feel like my face is beat. And that is it for this look. The eyeshadow palette. It ain't going nowhere. Y'all know I love me a good green palette. I think that overall, I might have been just expecting it to be a little deeper. I don't know. I don't know what I expected, but 
I feel like a lot of, I thought a lot of the shades were going to look alike and I feel like they did when I swatched them, but then putting them on my eye, it was different. So I don't know. I mean, y'all saw what I did. I feel like the color showed well. I also think they showed well because I used a really light base so they were able to show up. If I was going in with just my concealer, maybe it wouldn't have as well. So that's something else to keep in mind. But if you like greens like I do, I think this palette is worth it. I think this is supposed to be permanent, so you might want to wait till you can get it on sale. I do also have an affiliate code with Natasha Denona. Super excited about that. And I believe it's Barbell Barbie. I think that's it, but I will put it in the description box below. So if you want to pick up the palette or anything else from the website, you can get 15% off. So don't pay full price. We don't like that. Thank y'all for sticking with me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new, I hope you decided to join the family. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.